Over the past few months, uh, I have been trying to think of a few anecdotes to share that might give you at least an idea of what it was like to grow up having Bob Munden as a father. Um, how to choose? <laughs> so many stories. Um, okay, keys. I've told some of you these stories, and some of you were witness to some of this, but um, my dad shot keys. He had keys, he shot keys. Remember the Impossible Shots episode on Outdoor Channel in which he shot a key to unlock a padlock? Remember that? I mean, who thinks up stuff like that? How weird. You know? Well, in normal life, um, there were key stories, too. Holly, she, she knows. When my family was just outside Philadelphia in the 1970s, uh, one day we were driving, and we were in one of those traffic circles. Okay, you know what I'm talking about, those traffic circles? Dad saw that a, a big rig pulling, like, double trailers was trying to get into the circle, but no one would let him in. And so Dad, you know, he backed off a little bit and waved the truck driver on, neighborly, right? Well, the guy in the car behind us didn't care, man. He laid on his horn. Dad could see in the rearview mirror that the guy was yelling and cussing, cussing him out because he was mad that my dad did this horrible thing, slowing down a little bit to let this, this big trucker, you know, in his traffic circle. The guy might have been there for three hours, you know. Anyway, the dude was really angry and kept blaring that horn. And then Dad said, that's it. And he got out of the car. I remember Mom saying, don't hurt it, Bob. Don't hurt it. <laughs> you know, she just goes, oh my God. Anyway, the guy, the guy who was freaking out stopped honking when Dad, Dad got up. I did, sorry. Let me start over. He, the guy freaking out stopped honking when Dad, Dad got out of our car. Dad walked a few steps to the other car. And uh, the guy says, <laughs> he's scared now. He's, he, all of a sudden, all his bravado is somewhere you know, around Pluto. And um, anyway, uh, the guy is, it was in the 70s, so he's desperately trying to roll up his window, you know, in his car. Dad's walking just a few steps. He gets over to the car, puts both hands on the window, and shoves it down. And then he reaches in, and the driver, he leans over into the passenger side, and he's covering his head, going, don't hit me, don't hit me, I'll sue, I'll sue. Dad couldn't abide a coward. <laughs> but um, anyway, Dad didn't touch him. He reached in and grabbed, took the keys out of the ignition. He had a wad of keys. And like my dad would say, you just think about that, okay, when I say. Um, anyway, he took two steps back from the car and he launched this wad of keys into a field of really tall grasses and weeds. <laughs> okay? And then he said, he, went, he looked up, he laid into the guy, toward the guy, and he said, now they're going to be honking at you. <laughs> yeah. Then he got back in the car and then we left, you know, we just drove off. And, I mean, think about that, I mean, he probably had to call, he, people were honking, he probably had to call to get help. Thank you, I was like, going to be on the table soon. <laughs> I don't get out much. Anyway, um, yeah, he just couldn't stand the key. He goes, oh God, it's so typical, the guy's all tough, I go walk up to him and he goes, eh, I'll sue, I'll sue. Anyway, um, okay, key story number two. Once my dad got an idea in his head about something he wanted to do or thought that he could probably do, he just he kept at it. For years, I mean years, my father would stop walking suddenly and throw his own wad of keys. He'd throw them way into the air, and then he would lean over slightly, I'll demonstrate. Take one or two fingers and pull his pot back pocket out of his jeans. I pull it out a little bit, okay? And then wait. Naturally, the keys landed on the ground. You know, 
But one day, I think it was in a, a mall in, in Southern California, a massive mall with a skylight situation and lots of room. Dad once again threw his keys in the air, bent over slightly, pulled the back pocket of his jeans out a little bit. One or two keys went into his pocket and held the rest of the wad of keys in place. My dad didn't flinch or celebrate his victory. He just started walking in the mall again like that stunt always worked. <laughs> Okay, key story number three, and it's the last key story. Um, an especially frustrating thing for my mother, my sister Missy, and I to watch our, my father do over and over and over again was his attempting to throw a hotel motel key into the lock. Okay, these were keys. That's before they had the car. We'd take the key, we'd go up to the room, and just throw it at the lock. <laughs> I have no idea how many locks we're talking about here, but the number is certainly impressive. I remember Mom, Mitzi, and I would, you know, we'd roll our eyes every time he threw the key at the lock, and of course it fell to the ground. And he would just look at us, roll, roll his eyes, roll the eyes himself, you know, just like, I know, you know, he'd go, I know, and he'd smile. This was during the days, you know, before the plastic keys, obviously. But he kept trying, you know, we were like, oh, give it up, would you? <laughs> anyway, um, it was relentless. Anyway, um, then at a motel in Indianapolis, it happened. <laughs> My father threw a key toward the motel door lock, and it stuck, just barely, but it stuck. And he, he, he pushed it all the way in, unlocked the door, then stepped back to let us girls in. He didn't say a word, okay? The rest of us freaked out. We're like, you know, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, we couldn't believe he did it. It's like, are you kidding me? Anyway, he said something like, what? I told you I could do it. <laughs> I mean, this had gone on for years. I don't even, I can't remember when he wasn't trying to do that. Okay? Anyway, Dad never launched his keys into the air or out of motel room lock again after his successes. And, but, and I bet the guy in the traffic circle was a little more patient the next time another driver led an 18-wheeler into a traffic circle, okay? But um, the last little story I want to tell is... Um, those stories were about what, what he was doing. This is about um, him and, and me. Okay. <laughs> oh man, the keys. <laughs> anyway, when, when we were small and Dad played around with Missy and me by hiding our toys or starting pillow fights, stealing butter or jelly off our butter knife, so fast that we didn't see it happen. <laughs> Suddenly the butter would just be on his butter knife. And that was it. We never saw you, you just you know, you just go in, you get you get some butter and you start to move towards your toast and your butter is gone. <laughs> and he's sitting over there and it's on his knife. And he goes, That look. Sometimes if you do it on TV he'd go You know, we tease it. <laughs> this is amazing, but anyway, he irritated us, and he would he just made that face, just irritate us, which it did. And when I got really mad at him, I would say, "Ooh, I wish I could smash you in the face with a lemon meringue pie." <laughs> and he would make that same face again, because you know I was a little kid, and I was totally just you know I couldn't do anything. Anyway, when I was turning 13, we were living in Cape May, New Jersey. Of course, my parents allowed me to invite some girlfriends over for a slumber party, right? Um, that was great. What I did not know was that my dad went to a bakery and ordered a custom-made lemon meringue pie <laughs> with lots of extra meringue. He said later that the people at the bakery were more than happy to help him give me this great present. Because with my sister and girlfriends watching, Bob Munden 
after making that face again, <laughs> allowed me to smash that lemon meringue pie into his face, just like I had wanted to do since I was a little girl. <laughs> In the picture, he's going like, like he was scared, you know? <laughs> We have photos of him with his eyes barely showing, just covered with meringue and lemon feeling and crust all over, whipped cream, and we were doing this, eating the meringue off his shoulders. And then he got up after doing this great thing for me, and he went into the bathroom and cleaned up. Now that's a dad.